Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Thursday, August 12th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. We're still watching our two systems here, Tropical Storm Fred moving past the Turks and Caicos and to the south of the Bahamas, and Invest 95L, a tropical wave that is close to developing into a tropical depression heading toward the Lesser Antilles. We're going to start with Fred again today, and this is the aftermath of the system crossing over the island of Hispaniola, which has very tall mountains, and as expected, this has disrupted the system significantly. What we can see left over here is a relatively naked circulation, not a lot of thunderstorms over top of it, and it's barely closed. You can see the rotation visibly here, but if we actually look at the recon data from the aircraft, what we'll find is very light easterly winds on the north side, and barely any westerly winds on the south side. We're talking about five, maybe 10 knots at a maximum. So the circulation is, is very close to being an open wave at this point, still closed, but barely central pressure about 1,013 millibars. So this is a very weak vortex, that's the bottom line. And this is what has survived the crossing. Most of the deep moisture associated with it is displaced off to the east, and the vortex is kind of moving off into this slightly drier air mass to the west and this is a little bit displaced from where the mid-level troughing likely is on the eastern side. Now this is all roughly what was expected by computer models over the last few days, so nothing really surprising has come to pass for FRED so far. Now the difficulty in the forecast going forward for FRED is whether or not the system will regain strength and recover as it moves west-northwestward, roughly parallel to the coastline of Cuba in the general direction of Florida. Now for a, a vortex like this over water without any thunderstorms left over, uh, what it's relying on in terms of being able to regain strength is whether it can pick up enough moisture off the ocean through this rotating airflow to re-moisten the atmosphere and start generating thunderstorms again and being able to regenerate strength that way. And that really depends on exactly how strong this rotating airflow is. As we just mentioned, it's quite weak right now. The question is whether it's too weak. If it is too weak, it may never recover. There is some moderate wind shear over top of this right now. I can show you the water vapor satellite loop showing the upper low over Florida right now, imparting some westerly flow aloft. The remnants of FRED circulation is right about here. So there is some shear. There are some inhibiting factors at play. However, the environment is not terribly dry. You can see this color here is relatively light gray. It's not ultra dry like, say, this air mass down southeast of Puerto Rico right now. So there is some opportunity for thunderstorms to regenerate, and we likely will see some regeneration of the thunderstorm activity during the next 24 hours or so. The question will be whether that's enough to kickstart a re-strengthening of Fred's vortex as it heads northwestward. And that's not something we can really say with certainty right now. Currently models are split on whether this occurs because Fred's current intensity is kind of teetering on the edge of being too weak to recover versus having enough oomph left to kickstart a recovery. If you look at some of the model guidance we do have today, this is the GFS upper level flow just to show that this upper low over Florida is still doing what we kind of expected and eventually weakens a little bit over time so that by the time we get to Saturday, one of the things that could occur is, is the flow will shift more out of the south. Fred will be somewhere near the Florida Straits by this time, and wind shear may lessen some. It could get slightly more favorable, uh, but the shear is unlikely to go away entirely. And so Fred will likely have some barriers uh, in the environment that are, are less favorable for quick development. And those are unlikely to go away entirely over the next couple of days as the upper low will be sticking around. If we look at the, the bottom of the atmosphere here, this is the GFS low level vorticity or spin showing the remnant vorticity maximum of FRED just off the coastline of Cuba. And this is for some time tonight. And on this model, uh, there is really not a lot of redevelopment. There is some that tries to happen near the southwestern coast of Florida by the time we get to Saturday evening and early Sunday morning, but overall the GFS has gotten a little bit less aggressive. You can see here eventually a storm kind of reforms, uh, but it is a weak one in the northeastern Gulf on the model. So in general, GFS has trended weaker. The European model uh, remains just a little bit more robust here, it shows the vort max associated with FRED tonight, and then moving toward southwestern Florida and starting to redevelop into kind of a tropical storm strength vortex by the time it reaches that area on Saturday evening. 
and then continues into the northeastern Gulf where it continues re-intensifying and is a solid moderate tropical storm on the model by the time it reaches the Florida Panhandle. And in general, the European model has actually become more supportive of re-strengthening over the last 24 hours, whereas the GFS has become less supportive of that future. So we do have kind of a split here in possible outcomes for FRED in the computer guidance. So at the moment, it's difficult to say with certainty which of these outcomes will come to pass. And for now, the National Hurricane Center is sticking with the idea that FRED has a chance to re-strengthen as it approaches the Florida Keys over the next couple of days. And we'll be watching for that outcome closely. At this point, I would say there's still a significant chance that we eventually see FRED start regaining strength but the good news at this point is it's going to take time if that is going to happen. So we're likely to see Fred remain weak for the next couple of days. So this segment of its journey here, we're unlikely to see Fred get, get really strong at all during the next couple days through Friday evening. And it's likely to not be a significant wind event for the Southern Bahamas, Northern Cuba, or South Florida, but heavy showers uh, will certainly be passing through this area. And if Fred has regained thunderstorm activity by the time it reaches Florida, uh, there could be heavier rains associated with it. Obviously right now there's not a ton of rain going on, but chances are it will be a wetter system by the time it actually reaches the Florida Peninsula. And right now National Hurricane Center is continuing to track this just to the west of the Florida Peninsula and then into the Panhandle. And this track over water, assuming Fred is recovering by the time it reaches this point, it may continue to gradually strengthen as it approaches the Panhandle. So right now, NHC still forecasts a tropical storm with 60 mile per hour max winds by the time it reaches the Panhandle. So there is a chance for a significant weather event to reach the Gulf Coast. There is a chance that Fred fails to recover at all and we see a vortex that kind of just dissipates here. We'll still get wet weather spreading into Florida as the moisture associated with the storm continues propagating. But there's a chance that we see a weaker storm than forecast here. We just can't really guarantee that at this point and there's still a significant chance that this forecast comes to fruition. One other thing to note is it is possible that as Fred tries to recover over the next couple of days, it could deviate slightly to the north at certain points, and it is possible that this track ends up being over land over the Florida Peninsula, as opposed to staying over water. At that point, it would mean that the heaviest rain may shift northward <clears throat> into a more eastern part of the Florida Peninsula, but it also means that the storm would be weaker as it comes north because it's tracking over land more so than the Gulf of Mexico. So there's still some subtlety, subtlety there as well to the track as well as the intensity. So bottom line, weak storm, likely to stay weak for a while, some uncertainty still in the future. So just be prepared for at least a wet event in this area and possibly some elevated winds as we get farther along past the weekend as well for parts of Florida. We're gonna shift gears now to our other storm that we're watching to the east of the Caribbean. This is Invest 95L and this is continuing to track westward. We mentioned this yesterday. Here's a closer look at it. A little bit better organized than when we last checked on it. Yesterday we had a highly elliptical trough axis. Today it looks like there's a little bit of a better defined circulation on the eastern edge of this convection. There is still easterly wind aloft imparting some shear. So if the circ is here, uh, all the thunderstorm activity remains offset to the west and southwest of that center. If we look at the scatterometer pass that came in a few hours before the recording of this video, there's that convection and there's not a really well-defined circulation on this pass, but there is a very strong curvature to the wind field on that eastern edge. And this is kind of where we're seeing visible rotation on the satellite loop. And ASCAT here kind of confirms that there is at the very least a very sharp trough axis that has gotten sharper since yesterday. And this could be very close to being a closed circulation. So this may be closer to being a tropical depression uh, than it was yesterday. And right now, National Hurricane Center is giving it about 60% odds of eventually becoming a tropical cyclone. And I would say it's certainly more likely than not at this point, given how close it is already. As it continues westward though, it will face some barriers, uh, namely the wind shear I talked about. You'll see some of this cloud in the upper levels streaming from east to west on the water vapor satellite loop, continuing to push thunderstorm activity off to the west. And this will be present for the next couple of days at least. If we look at the GFS model, I'll show you here that uh, the system doesn't develop a lot on the model by Saturday evening when this is approaching the Leeward Islands. And one of the reasons for that could be the upper level 
flow continues to be a little bit shearing out of the east but this, this does improve over top of the system by that time. A little bit lighter shear here than it has at the beginning. If I go back here, it's under this very strong easterly flow to begin with. And then by the time we get toward the Leeward Islands, that flow has lessened somewhat. So conditions should gradually improve, giving the system an opportunity to form by the time it reaches the Leeward Islands. And while the GFS does not show development, the European model does show a tropical cyclone by Saturday evening nearing the Leeward Islands. And this has been fairly consistent on the European model. So again, kind of some split forecasting here from the computers, but probably right now chances are going up a little bit that we'll have some sort of cyclone here, given that it's showing some organizational trends compared to 24 hours ago. Not likely to strengthen tremendously during the next couple of days, given that it does have the wind shear in its way. Uh, but we could see a tropical storm approaching the islands in short order, similar location to where Fred tracked a couple of days ago. So we'll be keeping a close eye on this as it heads westward and Fred as it heads toward the Florida Straits and could potentially re-strengthen over the next few days. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.